So in addition to chromosome mutations, which are changes in the actual structure of the chromosome, which affects multiple genes all at once, you have mutations that only affect a single gene, or mutations that happen at the genetic level or close in the actual sequence of the DNA helix. This is not so much because of a breakage causing deletions, non-disjunctions, uh, transposition events which are causing inversions or balanced transpositions and translocations and things like that. We're talking here about changes in the actual sequence of the DNA code. So not changes in the structure of the chromosome, but changes in the sequence of the DNA code. That is what a gene mutation is. So that's the major difference. Make sure you know that. Now, the most common types of gene mutations are substitution, deletions, and insertions. So you see here in the top a code for, ge for a genetic sequence that the way it's supposed to be. But you see that in this code, the, a substitution of a G for an A right here, this A created a change in the amino acid sequence or the, which was going to affect the way the protein looks like. Now, remember that inside chromosomes, you have DNA, and inside of DNA, you will have actual genes. Now, if this gene change happens in an exon or an intron, or we're going to talk about these, what these things are later, but basically what you need to know, if these things happen in a sequence of a protein, it might actually affect the protein. And so that is what changes the amino acid because of that. Now, notice a deletion. You deleted the G, and so you shifted the entire code this way. And so now instead of ending with the C, the A, which was sitting over here, is where it's going to end up with. And you basically, again, you might change the entire protein from now on because not, you didn't change just this one amino acid because of substitution. You shifted the entire code one, one base over, and so you're going to change every single amino acid from here on. It's going to cause a lot of problems because of this. Also, the whole protein will be changed if there's an insertion event. Look again. This time I added an A ahead of the G, and so again the entire protein code was shifted to the right, which again changed every single amino acid sequence from here on. And these are examples of our things. Let's look at, each, look at each one of them in more detail. So here you go, an insertion mutation. In this case, you see that instead of having the C after the first histidine, you change that into an A, and because of that change, from now on, the entire sequence will change and you will get different DNA from that point on down for different proteins as well. So you can see how the protein is based on the DNA. Each three pieces of DNA is called a codon. You change, and each of those codons stands for one amino acid. If you change this word, this genetic word, it's three letters long, and we're going to learn about this when we do a protein synthesis later in the year. But if you change a single one of these spaces, you will change that protein as a consequence of it. And that's an example of an insertion that you hear, see here. Uh, an example of a deletion event will be something like this. Again, in this case, I removed this A over here. And then because of that, the entire protein was shifted, changing all of the sequence from this point on. So again, you see how the insertions and deletions will be changing the genetic code. Another example that happens because of this is because a piece was accidentally copied. So you see that this, after this CAG over here, you're supposed to get GTA. But now you see that the DNA was CAGed over here. Look at this. It got CAGed twice. And now two copies were inserted in between, and now you no longer have the same protein because you inserted this extra piece of protein. So you're going to have a change in the protein sequence. Uh, the valine is no longer the fourth one. It just became the sixth one. So you see how a repeat expansion mutation is kind of like what happens during duplication uh, in the chromosome, but this is happening at the, at the level of the DNA. So, right? So, and another one, it's called sub substitution, like I talked about. You see that a single substitution of this particular gene right here will change the protein. Okay? Now, in this case, and this is interesting, both UUC and UUU both stand for PHE. That's interesting. There's a little bit of redundancy in the genetic code. And in this case, the word UUU and the word UUC mean the same thing. So you see that in this case, there was no mutation. Even though this is mutant DNA, this will be the same protein. So it, since the protein is identical, nothing really changes because of that mutation.
So sometimes mutations will not create a change in the phenotype because of this redundancy that exists in the DNA code. There are many ways of saying the same thing, basically. There are only, there are 60 something different combinations of genes sequences of three codons. There are four types of bases, okay? You have A, C, T, and G. We're going to learn about that when we do DNA structure later in the year. But there's three codons per base, which means that the chances of this is one out of four, one out of four, one out of four, which gives you 64 different combinations for your genes. Okay, so because you have to multiply the chances like we did in genetics, right, for independent events. And so you get one out of 64. So you get 64 different combinations for, this, for these genes. However, there's only about 20 amino acids. And so there's going to be redundancy in which there's several ways of expressing the same amino acid. And that actually protects us from mutations because basically if an error happens in the copy process, that doesn't necessarily mean that it screws up the protein and so it preserves the animal look, and that's actually very important. But by gathering mutations throughout time, you're going to end up eventually changing the DNA code, and that's what it will create mutations. And by the way, this redundancy re usually refers to the last, last base. If this mutation had happened, say, for example, on the first base, it would have definitely changed the genetic code, all right, of, the, of which amino acid it stands for. The redundancy is usually in the last one, you, you like you see UUU and UUC standing for the same thing. And we'll talk more about that when we do a protein synthesis later in the year. By the way, another reason why sometimes mutations don't really show up is because some of your DNA is junk DNA or DNA that doesn't necessarily code for proteins. They have other functions in the genetic code uh, other than actually coding for proteins. Some of the DNA serves for structural purposes. Some of the DNA is leftover material from previous generations of DNA that we no longer use. Some of the DNA is just spaced in between. Some of the DNA is for centromeres. Some of the DNA is for telomeres. And so you have DNA in your code that's not necessarily coding DNA, which is not necessarily pieces of DNA in charge of actually becoming or making a protein. So if a mutation happens in one of those pieces, it won't affect the proteins. And so not all mutations actually become visible when they happen. So that's a very important point as well. Okay? Now, a deletion event, a single deletion event, kind of like the one we just saw in the, in the previous picture, can actually cause the entire phenotype to change sometimes. Now, normally things like insertions and, and uh, deletions will be worse because they will actually, sh like we said, shift the entire DNA code and do something that we call a frame shift. We'll talk about that in a while and make things worse. But sometimes a single change, or one small substitution, changing a single one of those bases will screw up the entire gene. For example, you see here that a normal red blood cell looks like this, like a puffy red blood cell that has like normal look to carry oxygen around your blood. And it has normal hemoglobin inside. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have something like sickle cell anemia, it's a disease that happens because of a mutation, a single substitution event on the first base of a one amino acid sequence that makes it basically change that one amino acid. But because you change a single amino acid, you change the primary structure of the protein, which changes the secondary structure, the tertiary structure, and the quaternary structure of the protein. And that basically makes the protein become different. And instead of having a hemoglobin, you have an abnormal hemoglobin that forms strands inside the sickle shape and it, it makes, instead of having a normal cell, this sickle cell. And what that would do is it would damage the capacity of the cells to carry oxygen. So, and instead of looking like this, the cells will look like that. And those defective cells will make it almost impossible for a person to survive because they will not carry oxygen as efficiently as the other cells did. Notice, by the way, the red blood cells have the little fold inside of their membrane. They have a little gap in between. Remember the folds maximize exchange. Remember that? All folds. Mitochondria have folds. Cell membranes have folds. Um, all these things to maximize the surface area to maximize chemical reactions. The sickle cell lacks those folds, so it becomes less efficient, and it's also smaller, so it becomes less efficient at carrying oxygen. Now, just a little interesting fact about sickle cell anemia. It is a recessive trait. However, it's seems to provide an advantage to people in Africa. You see, malaria is a disease where a parasite, a protist, um, which is this, a different kind of a microscopic uh, animal-like organism, so a eukaryotic unicellular organism called a protist, specifically one that causes malaria that's, caused, that's carried by a bug, 
This parasite enters your bloodstreams and replicates inside red blood cells. So, because though people do have who have sickle cell anemia are harder to become infected by the sickle cell disease. So that means that if you're like big A, big A, and you don't have well, actually, let's look, let, let's use S for sickle cell. If you're big ass, big ass, you're not going to have any problems in your cells. But that means you have no protection against malaria, so you're going to have the tendency to have problems in Africa. You see the incidence right here of malaria versus sickle cell disease, and you see how there's a parallel between where malaria happens and where sickle cell disease is happening which almost seems to indicate that there's an advantage in Africa to be have sickle cell, which is why it's so common among people of African-American descent. Now, if you have big S, little s, you will actually show somewhat of a little bit of, a little bit of sickle cell. Now, you're not going to have cells that look like this. Some of your cells will look like that. Some of your cells will look like that. You're going to have a little bit of an intermediate look. It's like an incomplete dominance kind of thing. We talked about that when we talk about the dominance relationships in the, in the genetics chapter that when you look at sickle cell it depends on the level that you analyze to see what kind of what kind of relationship is happening but in the case of sickle cell if you have a look like this you actually have a phenotype that protects you from malaria but doesn't kill you because you have sickle cell if you have a little s little s you die because of sickle cell disease now number one medicine actually lets you survive longer with these things but eventually as you as you grow up and you're body starts requiring more oxygen to survive as you hit adolescence you're going to have a lot of problems and most people end up dying early earlier than they should because of the sickle cell disease now remember because this particular look gives you an advantage you're never going to get rid of that the supposedly of this bad gene because this bad gene is not a bad gene at all it's actually providing you an advantage to be heterozygous gives you an advantage this is going to be important when we talk about evolution so keep that in mind but that's an example of a single substitution causing mutation that changes the entire entire look of the cell so we also talk about the frame shift thing that we talked about because of something like an insertion of the lesion you're going to change the entire sequence and the entire protein so look at here for example so you have a sentence like the fat cat ate the wee rat because of a deletion deletion of the letter f you can change the sentence and then it no longer makes sense the act at a tet heel ill at. And not only that, it ends missing a letter at the end. Remember, each codon is supposed to be three letters long. So you can see how a deletion event can change the entire protein and made it basically, it doesn't make any sense anymore, this mutation, right? Now, an insertion event can do the same thing. You've shifted everything to the right because of an insertion, and now you have a message that still doesn't make sense. The alpha tat tat f l e that doesn't make any sense. And so you change the message because of an insertion or a deletion, and that's what the frame shift mutation is all about. Now, because of a substitution, it's only affecting a single point on the DNA code. Here, for example, is the mutation we just talked about, sickle cell disease. It's a mutation on the second... I said it was the first. I'm sorry about that. It's a mutation that happens on the second base of a triple of the codon code, and so it doesn't really have the redundancy to protect them. Usually the redundancy is on the last base. Remember that. And so because of that single mutation, the mutant hemoglobin will cause the sickle cell disease. And basically, it's something like this. The fat cat ate the wee rat, but if you make a substitution, you change the message to the fat bat ate the wee rat. Much of the message is still the same, but some of the message is altered because of that mutation. I hope you understand the difference between insertion, deletion, and substitution. And the idea of a single or point mutation, such as what happens during a substitution, and a frame shift mutation, which is what happens during an insertion or deletion event. And all of these mutations will change the genetic code, insertion and deletion, much more because it shifts the whole protein. But the substitutions may be enough to change that entire structure of the protein because when you change the primary structure, you ultimately affect the secondary structure as well. And so that is gene mutations on the next video we're going to be talking about uh, what these mutations do or the role of these mutations and how you get them and how to avoid getting them and so forth all right i'll see you then